Hi, everybody. Oh, yes, I didn't realize you could see J Lo and Hollywood back there. Um, hi, everybody. Welcome. Um, if you're new here, then welcome. My name is Lindsay. This is Jess. If you're not new here, welcome back. We're here every Tuesday at 7:30 answering questions that were sent in by you guys. You are more than welcome to ask questions as we go along. We will try our best to get to them. If we don't get to them live, we will try to get back and answer them afterwards. If we do um, get cut off or if you do experience any kind of technical difficulties, try refreshing your screen first. Otherwise, we will let you know if, um, if we're having te technical difficulties on our end and we will try to restart, but most of the time we're okay to keep going. And um, if you watch the replay, you will be able to watch uninterrupted. So in order to watch the replay, you need to get signed up for our email list to get that delivered to you every Tuesday morning. Um, so next week on Tuesday, this live will be delivered right to your inbox. You can do that. I will add the link to that in the, um, in the text for this post as soon as we're done, but you can also find it on our Facebook page. On the cover page, there's a button, a blue button that says sign up, you can hit there. Or if you're finding us on Instagram, you can hit uh, the link in our bio and you can find it there. We are answering the question, or I guess addressing the topic tonight, what are some options? We're gonna do three options. What are some options for, <laughs> what are some options for um, bits for aged show horses? So this is a question that we get a lot in a few different ways, but um, people that have aged show horses that are looking for some different options, <coughs> different things maybe to try heading into show season um, with their aged show horses. So we're not talking about um, we're not talking about young horses here. We're talking about horses that have been through the show pen at least a little bit. We're distracted because the dog's playing with a ball here. And hitting everything. He's having a great time. <laughs> um, do you want to start with your, do you want to start with your favorite bit? One of your favorite bits? You I know this, three. this is, oh yeah, I know. We're start, let's start with one. Let's go one. And if you guys have a bit that you really like riding in, um, share it in the comments because we're always interested to hear what your favorite bit is um, and what you ride in the most. I think one of the biggest things for me is like when we said we use the term three three bits a lot and the reason we do that is because old show horses do much better when you switch bits around and it isn't so much about which three it's that you want three different types of um, bits now when we're talking here anybody that knows us we're the rainers ranch riders cow horses those type of western performance horses and especially on the old horses moving them around in those three three bits um, is so important so that they always have a fresh face they always have a fresh mouth and they're always thinking about what's in my mouth and what's there um, I have at my disposal more than three. So it's safe to say. Sure. <laughs> yep. We have a few because we, <laughs> we, the royal we. Yeah. You have a very large bit collection. No, I don't. You. My goal is to have a large bit oh selection by next year. Oh my gosh. Um, but you switch them around by next year. But, <laughs> you just snuck that in there. <laughs> you you put in three this. different <laughs> three different bits. Stay yeah. on topic. Okay, okay. Quit Sorry. messing around. All right. Just focus. Yeah. Three bits. Switch them around, mm -hmm. and you have to know the personalities of your horses. Um, if I have, let's say, an old show horse that's maybe a little bit um, more fractious or hot or however you want to say it, they get a little worried when they show. Then what I'm usually going to do is I'm going to, 90, 99% of the time, I'm going to go from maybe a bigger bit for a couple of days, and then maybe the night before the show, I'm going to put them in kind of a dull, milder bit, and then show them in that a few times. And when I say 90% of the time, because the 
you can't use all horses the same, even those ones that personality are the same. If I have one that is maybe a little heavy, um, you know, maybe big fat lips, um, not as much sensitivity, you know, then I'm gonna switch them around into something maybe a little sharper and kind of wake those things up a little bit, uh, right, you know, the day or two before I show them. And I kind of have a three, three bit for three days. You know, you ride one for three days, switch it around at home. Even in the off season when you're just riding, it's really good to switch them around. Um, my go-tos are usually correction bits. Um, and what we mean by correction bits is like two brakes right here. Um, we have different size ports. Um, we use these one by ones a ton um, for showing, for training, whatever. But the reason we like these ones on them old horses is I can take hold of each side of their mouth a little bit differently. Uh, it moves in their mouth a little bit. Um, and it's a, to me, I like them because they're a very straight signal. You know, I pull, you give, you know, we don't get real complicated with them. Um, and we move, I ride a, quite a few in corrections. Um, and then when I go to show, if, what I'll usually do is I'll put them into something similar to like this with a little port in it, but it's a solid mouthpiece and it'll just keep them just a little straighter. Now, if I pull one rein harder than the other, this is gonna make that horse bend a lot more. So for beginners or, um, you know, younger horses, I might stick them, stay in that correction where it's a little more forgiving if somebody gets a little, one rein a little tighter or whatever, it'll buffer that out a little bit. But then I go into these bar bits, the solid mouthpieces, um, to kind of straighten that horse up and he, they get very focused between the reins and they go from there. And I want to play with them so much at home that I know that they, you know, like if I have, let's say horse A, in the bar bit, let's say for three days before the show, and then I get two good days with a correction bit where he's just his absolute best, he focuses the best, then I know that when I go to show and I'll put him in that routine. Um, another bit that I really like, and it's, um, a lot of people don't understand it a whole lot, but we'll pu I'll put him in these ports, a port <laughs> with a spoon on top of there, um, there's a couple different um, names for them depending on who the bit maker is and they make different designs but the biggest part with these and it's hard to, to show you because we have these purchase rings in the way but the, the port really sw sweeps back in their mouth um, it's really good for old horses if they want to play with their tongue and try to get it over there and, but what it does similar to like a cow horse spade um, any of those type of bits when they have that spoon on the top is it sits against the top of that mouth it gives a place to roll that bar back into that mouth and they pack it really well it's not for every horse not for every rider but they're a, a really nice bit and one of my favorite things to do with old old horses is put either this one just has rings in it um, makes it legal in the cow horse if you put a slobber strap on it makes it legal in the cow horse but the old horses like to play with their tongues a lot i don't want them to get bored and flip that tongue over the bit so i'll put the rings in there or some horses i'll put a cricket and what a cr cricket is it's a, a solid barrel through here and there's little grooves in it and the horse will run their tongue and it'll make a a sound with it where it kind of goes rrr, rrr. And you can always tell if I have a nervous horse that I'm showing, because all, all nervous horses for me go into a cricket, gives them something to occupy their mouth with, with their brain with, and they'll lope around and make that sound. And uh, for me, the biggest thing is, is you can switch shanks, you can switch whatever. Um, but I'm a big believer in, I switch those bits every couple of days. I do with the babies quite a bit too, is I'll switch different, different, um, snaffles and hackamores and stuff like that but it's so important that you switch them so you get a fresh mouth the other thing that i think needs to be said about 
all these bits and you know we get it a little bit when we sell them sometimes somebody will say well i didn't you know if it's let's say one of these cavalry shanks and it didn't lift my horse's shoulders up the way i th thought it was going to there's nothing magical about them you got to pull on them you have to use that bit you have to pull on it and make them give to those bridles and understand if you don't pull on them you can hang whatever you yeah, want you in their mouth set it in there the only ones that work when you just hang them is uh crickets you know if we leave i'll leave cricket bits in their mouth sometimes and just leave them in their stalls or let them run around the arena and let them play with that cricket and uh it's kind of funny to watch them do it because at first they play up here and then after a while they'll they'll let the spade bit with a cricket really pack their own heads but those are the only ones that you know you don't have to pull on <laughs> You have to you have to pull on them to make that horse give to where you want. Um, I don't think the style of shanks are as important. You know, like if I have a cavalry shank, I want to lift the shoulders up. If I want straight straight shanks or a luma shank, keep some backed in here. But I think at the end of the day, it's more important that you just move different bits. Three of them seems to be always kind of be the magic number. Um, you know, lots of people when they come and want to buy bits off of us, I'll let them try my bits so that they don't end up with a hundred of them at home. That's just silly having a whole bunch of bits. That's... I'm not saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but instead of having a whole bunch in a bucket at home, um, you know, you try them first, try different bits, um, and see which ones you just get along with. Um, I think when people go to tax stores, they get caught up in always trying to buy what looks like, you know, nice, oh, my horse is going to like this. It's going to... Happy. Yeah. Keep e e happy. yeah like, it's going to be soft on his mouth. I make them soft on how I pull them. I don't jerk on them. I pull on them. You make them soft. They will carry it well. Yeah. And, you know, everybody gets caught up like... One of my, um, well, I was just riding a colt round and I was saying, me and Lindsay were having a conversation. Everybody kind of goes into aluminum bits saying, oh, they're so light, they must be really nice. Aluminum bits, it, it has nothing to do with the, the, the weight sure. of the shank. Mm -hmm. um, a little bit heavier a bit sometimes is way softer because it gives a warning that's coming up. Um, you know, it has nothing to do, but everybody looks at those. And I'm not against aluminum bits. I have lots of them. I like them, but there's a purpose for them. But when they go, people go shopping at the tax stores, they want to buy this cute, you know, little silver on the side, whatever. And the biggest thing is when you buy one, buy a good one and pull on it. What are your three favorites? Let's answer Gail's question first, because I saw there was a question here. And for those of you guys that are watching, if you have questions, you can ask those, because I know Jesse talks really um, quickly. And um, sorry, I, didn't I know I, I have a hard fast. time. Well, my brain goes at such you, a fast. You know so much about bits and the way that they work. Well, you're you're BSing really fast. Nobody knows how they work because every horse will change it on you. you I think just feel you like you're talking, like you. some of us are still on like, okay, which is the port, which is the shank, which is the, you know, what's the purchase? What's the, you know, and so the rate that what you're talking about these things is fast. So if you have questions, there are no stupid questions. Definitely um, ask those. Um, and let's, and if you have a bit that you really like that you've been riding in, go ahead and share that because we always are interested in, in seeing what you guys are riding in. Um, Gail had a question. Are you talking about a horse that has been showing generally for more than how many years? Example, four or seven or how many years? I think we're just talking about anything that's not a futurity horse really, aren't we? We're kind of talking about anything that most of our most of you guys are riding basically yeah anything like hi robin it isn't so much whether they're four or six yeah what are you guys riding in robin I mean, I what are you riding in right now that, you know in the barn right now that um has never been to a show and you know is just at the stage of learning to change leads age really doesn't have much to do with it when we talk about four-year-olds we're talking 
and that's a rare occasion for us, we're talking normally about horses that have had a two-year-old year, a three-year-old year of some fraternities and are coming out in the fours. And at the fours, they're usually still not too, you know, you're still changing around in some different bits. But it gets to be more problematic. I don't know if that would quite be the right way to say it, but when they get into like that seven, eight-year-old years and they've been shown, you know, 50 times, they've been run down, they've been stopped, they've been... Um, they have a couple seasons under their belt with the non-pro. Yeah, they're turning the yeah. corners. They're knowing that they want to kind of get going a little bit. They're knowing that they want to be ahead there a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think those are such um, unique horses to really figure out to make them show really well. Um, mm -hmm. I seen somebody just put on there the double crosses. So the double crosses are Robin's in the bits, riding but you in. really have to watch which ones they are because a lot of them are not legal when you go to show. And, if, and I'm not saying yours is or is not Robin. I don't know which bit, you know, which one's yours is. But a lot of the double crosses are not legal in most associations. Um, they're a nice bit because they're very forgiving. They're kind of like the low corrections and that they have some breaks to them so you don't get in trouble but just a heads up that you want to make sure it's um it's legal to show in that's a good point and i'm trying to put that on the bits that we're selling on our shop i'm trying to put on there in the description what they're what they're legal for i don't have it on all of them i don't think but i'm trying to put it on there um karen had a good question i used to work with a stallion who knew which bit was used when riding and which bit was used when he was going to the breeding shed do you ever use an association like that for example a certain bit for showing one for recreational riding one for schooling where the horse would notice the difference i like this question this is a good question karen they do because when you take three bits and you get used to that routine they figure that out also um when we breed, we don't use bits to breed, um, but we do very, um, I have a very set routine that I use where um, they lip chain to tease, chain over their nose to breed, and they never falter from that. Uh, so there's, a, there's a halter and a lead shank just for every day leading around. There's a bridle means go to work and ride, and then the chain, the lip chain. Chain lead tease. shank is just yep. yeah. Then it's breeding. Super clear, but yes, that association. And I does work. Um, I still like to play roping a little bit too, and for sure, if I'm roping, I on all my show horses, I'll actually use a mechanical hackamore just to get out of their mouth. Mm -hmm. um, and then they kind of know the difference there. And any of the horses, um, I guess we haven't done one for a few years, that will show reining and the cow horse, is I will put different bits in their mouth. Um, I feel like they, after a little bit of time of schooling on them at home, they, they really understand that. They, they figure that out very quickly. The biggest thing is, is routines, especially with breeding stallions. Um, I'm very big on that, that you have to know that routine and that never changes. That for sure works. There are people that are trying to do like, if you're trying to write English and Western or you're trying to do, you know, anything that you're trying to differentiate. Like I've had horses that I taught lessons on and I showed myself and I used a different bit for when I was teaching lessons on them from to went to the bit that I used when I was writing them myself. I don't recommend doing that, <laughs> but one way to help make the difference is, is definitely with the bits. That was, that was a good question. One bit for, let's say trail riding and one bit for not one bit, a different bit or a different set of bits for when you're preparing to show. I think that, um, that is really an effective strategy that works. Carrie Lynn, I mostly ride my broke. Ooh. I mostly ride my broke mare, she's nine, in a snaffle or a twisted wire. If I need some leverage, I have a snaffle shank 
and this is normally what I use to show in. If I need something more, I'll use a correction or a spoon, depends on what I'm doing. <laughs> I prefer my Mayhews. I also don't do reining, which might make a difference, but we do the all around. Every horse is different. Lots of great tools out there when you use them correctly. Yeah, no, I don't sure. think it is any different. Um, you know, we'll put, ho we'll put awesome. old horses back in, um, like German martingales with, with twisted mm -hmm. wires, um, you know, twisted snaffles. Um, we always joke around here because Lindsay loves draw reins. I do like a set of draw reins. Um, yeah. Any of my Meredith Manor friends that are watching this are like shaking their heads at me, but I don't care. <laughs> 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 Love music. Now, I don't teach lessons. Like, I don't teach kids how to ride and draw reins. I don't teach. No, I, I think I draw reins are very misunderstood yeah. in that they need to be with the right person. Needs to be with the, in the right, the right set horse. of hands, the right horse. Yeah. That's for sure. I don't teach on those, but um, I do like them. And we have some bit similar, like when you said the twisted snaffle, um, you know, there's so many bits like that. Um, you know, we have some that are, um, you know, different mouthpieces with shanks. And I find if I school on one in a snaffle and then show them in a shank, Sometimes the older horses, there's just a little too much difference there. So if I can put them in, um, um, like a shank bit that maybe can lighten them up a little bit and then go show them, they understand it because they're still getting pulled on in that shank part. And I think that's sometimes some horses can definitely be that way. Um, the all around stuff is a little different. Um, you know, you're, you're not going as fast. Um, you know, sometimes the reiners and the cow horses, we have to take hold of them. You know, we're going a little faster. But I think it's important to, you know, just move them bits around. And I think that's so important. Um, and some of them old horses, after you've shown them enough times, you get to know the routine that they like. Um, I was thinking of a stud horse a couple years ago that I sh uh, more than a couple years ago, and he had a routine. We rode him in a heavy bit um, when we showed him. It was a real dull, heavy type bit. Um, he and he just showed better if he had a like kind of a sharper bit. Right up until about 15 minutes before we show, we'd swap him out, put a heavier bit, and then we'd ride him a lot in aluminum bits. And he actually got rode in some draw reins once in a while. Um, Lindsay likes draw reins more than I do. I, I think they have a place. I do ride in them. But we always joke that Lindsay likes them a little more than I do. And that's fine. Everybody has their own things. The only thing that I do, I'm not a big shank snaffle person. I don't think the way it pulls just works as good as a low like one of those one by one corrections. Mm -hmm. um, oh, there's Daphne. I was actually. Do you want to pass me those? Hope you're doing well, Daphne. I haven't heard from you. I was going to call you a few times and I'll get to it one of these days. Hope you're doing well. So instead of a shank snaffle, I will go to a one by one correction. Um, so it's not tall enough to be on the top of their mouth. The double breaks, you don't end up with one popping up on the top of their mouth. Um, and I go right from snaffles to one of these mouthpieces, maybe a little shorter shank, but these mouthpieces, uh, before I go to, I don't, I don't even think I own a shank snaffle anymore. I think I sold them all. I need one. I should both buy some. Oh, man. <laughs> are you going to ask me what my favorite three What are your favorite three? Where'd the other Anything one Anything with draw rings. That's just it. Oh, it's a, I think it's, oh, no. Is it hanging on the back of the thing there? I... I am a correction person. I like corrections. I'm comfortable with them. I seem to get along well with them. I like teaching in them. I just, I think maybe they're, they're simple. I understand how they work. I understand the mechanics. Um, so I, this would be my go-to for an aged horse, mostly because like Jesse said, a lot of them are coming out of a shorter shank version of this exact same one. Um, and I just feel like this is a safe bet. 
I like this specific one, and this is one of the reasons why we sell them on the shop, is because it's a well-made bit. It's a really well-made bit. It's well-balanced. It's made of blued steel, which is a nice material to work with. It's a nice, has a nice soft feel to it. They do rust, which the horses like. Um, this one has little copper inlay on the inside. I don't know if I'm super attached to that part or not, but I do like this particular bit a lot. I think that is, this is probably, would you say this is the bit or maybe the shorter shank is the one that gets used the most here? Oh, we use them a lot. Yeah, I like this one. This would be my go-to for myself as well as for, you know, most people that I'm teaching. If I'm going to get really crazy, I'm going to go to almost the exact same one. And I like to, I don't have the same, you know, I just don't have the same experience as Jesse does with so many different bits. So when I change something, I like to change something minimal so that I can understand the feeling of it. I can say whether I liked this better. I don't, I just don't, I just don't have that same touch or something with them to get that feeling. So for me, if I'm going to switch and I'm going to try to, you know, work with my eliminating my variables to see what it is that I like, I'm going to take this one that has the same shank and just has a little bit bigger port in the middle there, a little bit wider and see how that goes. Or I might take that one that I just had and switch to a cavalry shank. I might switch the chin strap. I might go to my draw reins. Um, I might change those other little things to try to see what I like. But I think curb strap is another one that a lot of people forget. Yeah, um, makes a big difference. You know, they just put the cheap little ones you buy at the regular, I shouldn't say regular tax stores, but you know, when they have any old chain on them and whatever. Mm -hmm. We have three main ones we use and one of them for old horses if they're a little tough um you know it, it it has a little bite to it and you put the bite under that chain or under that chin and you can wake them up there a little bit and you change that around mm -hmm. and then another one if i have horses that are maybe a little bit worried um boy i'll go to a leather curb strap even like on a shank, but, and that is legal. It is legal at NRHA and RCHA, you have to. Um, AQHA, it's legal. Um, and I'll go to a leather one quite often. And I think that's another one too, is you gotta switch those around on them old horses and figure out where those parts are that, um, you know, it works. What's the benefit of having a rectangular port as opposed to the round? So the round one is gonna touch the top of their mouth a little bit. Um, if you have one that maybe has... I'll show you the two of them beside each other so you can see the difference. So the, the one on my side is called a one by one. It's one inch high, one inch wide. This doesn't go on the top of their mouth. So you're, you're simply pulling on the bars and the tongue. They look really big right now on yeah. that. They're not actually, this is very small. This is And then this one gets bigger. into a two inch port where it's gonna get close to touching on the top of their mouth and it's gonna have just a little more bite to it. Um, this one's straight up and down, so you wanna leave the curb strap maybe a little looser and let them feel them picking up a little more. It's just what, and it's a lot of it is what them horses like. Um, Try it. You know, and that's why I'm a big believer on, you know, like when people come rider, I tell them all the time, we'll try one of mine. Let's see if it even goes the direction we want it to go. Um, the biggest thing is just you get a little more height in there so you get a little more leverage and for everybody that tells me um oh that's a big bit i shouldn't ride in it or um you know anything like that if i pull solid they are much better with too much bit in their mouth and I never need to pull that extra little bit. And so are riders, oddly enough. If, you know, we see it all the time where people want to put a smooth snaffle in these half broke horses and have beginners ride them and mm -hmm. they pull and they pull and the horses get pulling. Mm -hmm. You know, well, one beginner shouldn't be riding your own horses, but we see it all the time. 
when they go to show, if you actually put a little more bit in there than maybe your brain thinks you do, and then you just don't touch it, you don't bang it, you, you confidently take your hand, go to the left slow but solid, them horses will actually get better as time goes on. Yeah. <clears throat> what, why not a snaffle shank if it doesn't touch the top, just a little more leverage? I need to get one of those and try it. Um, the way so a snaffle with a shank, snaffle mouthpiece with a shank, it splits on one part one. and it scissors in on the side of their jawbone just a little differently. It yeah. comes more in from the side. With the two brakes, it wraps around a little more. And depending on how you adjust your curb strap, sometimes you can get the top of that, um, you know, when that snaffle comes up like that, because you pull on and it comes up. Some people, you can get them high enough where they actually touch the top of their mouth, and it's unlike a port, because a port, they balance off and come it's this flat, way. Yeah. This way, it just pokes them from the top up, and they, they open their mouth and sit up into it. Um, they're, uh, we, see lo we see loads of people that come in riding in those oh yeah, tom, the thumbs tom thumbs and thumb. stuff, and it's like one of the first things that we usually do at a clinic or somebody that's here is we just put them into one of these, you know, Tom one of those make to great try. Great fishing weights. Yeah. My third favorite. Third Thanks favorite. for asking. <laughs> my third favorite. Um, my third favorite is a roller or a cricket, just like Jesse said. I. Did I use one of those with Dunnett too? Yep. I've used one I of these. I think it's funny when you, when you much, were saying about the corrections. Yeah. Because most of the, the show well most of the show horses you've shown have been older horses yeah and you will ride in a correction a lot at home yeah and then when we make the bridles up you i'm not going to say you show better but the way you ride and the way the horses that you have shown i'm not going to say they were older and most of them were Used older. Up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Lindsay gets to show the whatevers. I get to show, yeah, whatever. Um, and that's. And it's not a bad thing. It's, it's not just, a bad you, thing. I've got to show, she, some, show some great horses. You get a knack for them. So she rides in them corrections a lot at home. And then we put them um, straight bars and with a little port and little crickets and stuff in as she shows. And. If you Thanks can talk me into it, because I also don't like changing things right before I go show. No kidding. <laughs> I'm just representing, we, and, I'm just here to okay, represent I see, I guess all we the people say, that don't like to change things. Just keep all my stuff the same so that I know what I'm feeling when I go in. And we, I'm not saying we always have tried it at home before you go to the show, but yeah, usually you're okay when I say, why don't we try this? And you give me this look and call me an idiot and then you do it. And if it's in the warm up pen right before I go in, then I do, but. I also know that that's a thing that needs to happen is trying different things at the show, trying, trying different things right before the show, trying different things when you go into the show pen. Now I know that is a thing and I know to expect that. So <laughs> I can deal with it. What I was going to say about this bit Sorry. was that I do like the rollers because some of the older horses that I've had that I've shown and, and when I'm seeing some of my non pros ride, I can see where, their horses get, you know, looking around and distracted by other things. And a lot of times putting one of these in, like Jesse said, it gives them something to focus on. They will sit there. The one horse that I showed, he would actually roll. It was not, it wasn't like this. It was actually a cricket, but he would actually sit there and he would actually do that with his tongue with every single lope stride, every single lope stride. So when I did the Western riding class with him, which if you don't know the Western riding class, the entire pattern is in the lope. You're just changing leads all the way through. Every single stride, he set the rhythm with his tongue on the little cricket. I think- We should have grabbed some crickets, but- Yeah. I think the helped. neat thing with the cricket too is because uh, what a lot of people don't, it unlocks their jaw. Yeah. They take their tongue and they go like this. So a horse that's maybe a little nervous <clears throat> and bracy on the jaw, and they're like she's like Lindsay said they're looking around now all of a sudden they're playing with their tongue which unlocks their jaw they're softer and they have a sound I think the sound does a big thing for them because they can find that rhythm and when you leave a cricket in a horse's mouth for an hour you you come back and that's all you hear is that 
Mm -hmm. And any of the people that have worked with crickets a lot of time, I love the sounds of them. Just, it, it sounds silly, but the different crickets we have, we don't, we don't have a lot of them, but we need more. Everyone has a different sound and it's kind of neat to play with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like those. And I do think that probably the unlocking of the jaw makes sense. If it's unlocking the jaw, then it's helping throughout the body. But I remember with that horse feeling like putting that cricket in his mouth helped keep his tail down. <laughs> he liked to use his well, tail. Well, thinking there instead yeah, of there. Yeah, thinking about that, that helps loosen up that, which carries through the rest of the body. And we've had some old... That one wasn't an old re well, he was old, but he wasn't a rehab that was horse. A, he, he was, was a 15 new horse. when I got him. And uh, yeah, 200 and what did he have? 250 quarter horse points or something before I got him. Yeah, like he'd been around, but he wasn't, he, he still showed okay. But some of the he liked to people that come in with not, yeah. you know, maybe old used up things that you know, it's what their budget can afford, and that's fine. We'll go to that cricket if they're those nervous horses, and it's amazing how many patterns they can get where that horse walks to center looking down at the cricket i think they you oh, know yeah. they just focus down they, they look just down stand the still at center because they're just ready to roll that they're not walking cricket. in there getting all yeah. nervous going what's about to happen and yeah they're a wonderful bit and i think the rollers are underused crickets especially are underused um in today so it was a very common thing mm -hmm. years and years ago but i think today it's a very un i wouldn't say unused but underused so I think, did we answer all of the questions here or were there any more? Yeah, I think we got all of these. And if anybody has really unusual, oh my gosh. crazy bits, yeah. please send me a picture. Yeah, I love the, the most know. unusual and crazy. Um, I think they're neat. You like bits. I like bits. Um, speaking of bits, a lot of these ones that we showed you guys are the ones that we do have on the tack shop. We have on our online tack shop. We could have shown you some of the ones that we use every day, but they're dirty. <laughs> they're hanging up and they're dirty. So we grabbed these new ones, but these ones, all these ones that we showed you today, we do have, um, we do have on our shop. They are the blued steel. They're made by Dutton's. Some of them are, some of them you have seen um, other makers that are similar to this. Oh, yeah, like somebody on here mentioned Mayhew. Yeah. You know, I have, well, I, I have, I ain't telling my wife how many I got of any kind of bit. I have a few Mayhews. <laughs> There's tons of them. Okay. There's lots of good bit makers. <laughs> okay. There are lots of good bit makers. One of the reasons why we um, go with Dutton's other than they're great people is that um, they make good bits and they're really reasonably priced. So these ones are, I believe these ones are 109. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure the price is gonna go up on those too, just like everything else. But for now, they're $109 and um, we would be happy to chat with you if you're considering buying any one of those and also if you do buy the bit we don't have them on our online shop but we do have some uh curb chains and stuff so if you are looking for a curb chain that goes with a specific bit just shoot us a message and we'll make sure that we add that to your order good kathleen your mom has a lot of bits I don't even want to show. <laughs> I don't even want to show them your your rack over there, which is uh, didn't see a cathedral. Carolyn's saying didn't see a cathedral. Yeah, we have a few of those too. We didn't pick them for tonight. They're not in the top three. Not in the top three for tonight. We also have for anybody who's not riding an age show horse. If you're riding younger horses, we also have done several videos about bits, the three bits that we think everybody should have, or our three favorite bits. We've done a few videos about those and you can find those on our YouTube channel if you head over to YouTube. It's one of the oldest, one of the very first videos that we did. So we're super awkward <laughs> online, but you can see um, you can see some of that information there. And if you want that, I can send that to you. I can post that for you. 
I Are think we good? at the cathedral, the big thing is that there's so many variations of everything. Like if you take the the one at the roller that we just had and straighten up that spoon on there, now you're touching in the same way a cathedral would. And I think it's so um, you know, one every bit maker has their own ideas. Every horse has their ideas. You know, just in the rainers, I mean, you know, we have the stuff that's maybe cow bread. We have the stuff that's maybe the old, you know, jack grape pine kind of stuff. And they all get along on different stuff. And it's just a matter of, you know, you got to talk to people you trust about what kind of bits for which horses. Um, try some. Get a feel for the horses you like. And then usually... Like most people, when they buy horses, they always buy similar type horses because that's what they like. So that when they do have some bits that they have, they can use them for multiple horses because it's the same styles. Um, you know, there's just so many variations of everything. Um, and, and we didn't, you know, there's so many different disciplines too, like barrel racing and rope horses and, um, you know, any of that kind of stuff. I have Pasifino bits, you know. Great. <laughs> Those will come in handy for all the Pasifinos we're riding. <laughs> you know, but uh, there's just so many. You know, we can't go through all of them. It would take us a year. But yeah, um, there's a lot of really nice bits. You just have to find what really works for you. Um, you know, and kind of go from there. You know what's going to happen now is now that we said that, you're going to have me ride in one of those Pasifino bits this year. Oh, it's not even legal in AQHA. Oh, okay, good. I've never even had it on a horse. I bought it because it had a set of reins on it. I wanted. Okay. <laughs> if anybody's in the market for a used pass of pheno bit, I know where there's one person. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so one of the next Facebook Lives that we need to do is, like, your three weirdest bits. Oh, really? Yeah, I think we should do that. I, I think that would be fun. I, I hope nobody wants to buy them and use them, but... I think it would be fun. Oh, like ones that just, we use or just ones that are on the wall? No, just like ones at your collection. Like what are the most bizarre bits and how do they work? I think that'd be fun. I can keep my Pasifino bit then. Keep the Pasifino <laughs> bit. What the heck? <laughs> okay. Thanks for being here with us tonight, guys. Um, like I said, I'll add those. Uh, I'll add the link to subscribe to our email list in the post text so that you can find that. If you want to have the replays delivered right to... Um, right to your inbox and if you have a submission if you have a question that you'd like for us to answer or you have um, a topic that you'd like for us to discuss then you can send that in to us at our email address which is hayescofellph at gmail.com we'll add it to our list we'll get it covered we'll do a whole session about it just for you do we answer the question that just came up about a gag bit yeah i didn't see a gag bit Gag bits are not legal in the I almost pulled one because I do like those too, though. <laughs> yeah, good ones are nice to ride in. Yeah. They have a bad name. Mm -hmm. You know, it sounds horrible, the name of them. Used right, they're actually really nice bits, but we just, we didn't even talk about that because they're not, um, you can't show in them. Yeah. Um, in the rainers and the cow horses and the ranch riders, yeah. you can bell race in them, you can rope in them, but um, like I said, there's just so many bits that, but no, they're not legal for, for our deal, so we... Mm -hmm. Um, there's a lot of them send me pictures okay thanks for being here tonight guys thanks for chipping in with your questions and your comments and we will see you next week on tuesday at 7 30 very good have a good night